a study that has just been published. The idea behind it was uh, I had been uh, working uh, for a, a few years on, on suicide and uh, family uh, and life events, but mainly the uh, uh, the, the, the uh, negligence and abuse in the family of origins of the person who was committing suicide. So we interview families. I did it also previously with uh, adolescent uh, in Montreal. It was more on suicide attempts and serious suicide ideation. And uh, at some point, uh, because I had been working in the first part of my career with uh, Aboriginal group, mostly in Mexico and later in uh, in Ecuador, but mostly on teams of ethnoscience or ethnopsychology. What is the sci What is the theory, psychological theories of uh, Aboriginal people in these regions? Uh, I, I had kept a, a very uh, a high interest working with uh, Aboriginal people. So uh, at one point, I got a bit tired of working in. Montreal, and I say, uh, be nice to, uh, because there is an issue of suicide among Aboriginal people, and I had a very uh, uh, intelligent uh, uh, student coming from Aboriginal community, so might as well start something in this area. <laughs> and, uh, and also, going to the, um, uh, I work with Gilles Bibo, who had been working with the communities of the Atikamek since uh, uh, the mid 1990s, uh, where there's been epidemics of uh, uh, of suicide in in these villages, uh, and, and talking with the people uh, there, especially with the elders, the elders say, "Oh, look at the family, look at the family." And I said, "Wow, that's interesting. We we seem to have the same idea to to look at the family and see how it could work with with suicide." Uh, we discovered though that. Uh, the elders' idea was not necessarily the same as ours. We had a more uh, developmental psychopathology background, uh, but their idea was to say, look, uh, the suicide is concentrating in certain families, and so they didn't necessarily refer to the uh, uh, to, to the behavior of the parents, uh, though in some way they did, you know, things are going wrong, but it's concentrated in certain clans, in certain extended family. Uh, look at that. And uh, their view was more in terms of uh, 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 transgenerational uh, trans uh, trauma that uh, in this family there's been an homicide in uh, 1910, and uh, now you see the result of that. These things have not been resolved, and uh, so uh, now, three generations after, we see suicide coming in these families. So it's an, quite another outlook. We, we tried to work on that also a little bit. We did some interviews, but uh, the, the data I will bring today is more uh, about uh, a, a more classical uh, view of uh, suicide and, and, and the family. Curiously, uh, there's a lot of, uh, su uh, family is uh, mentioned a lot as a risk factor in uh, suicide, but there is very little uh, literature uh, both in Aboriginal uh, First Nation and non-Aboriginal community that brings uh, really strong evidence that there is a, uh, a cause and effect so uh, there's some association uh, studies, but uh, they are not uh, done with a, a very strong uh, design of research. It is even the same with, um, recently I've been reviewing the uh, literature on adolescent suicide where there's many, <laughs> many more studies than with suicide. And also the evidence is not extremely strong. There is some evidence, but it, it's not, uh, it's not repeated. So there's been a couple of studies that uh, at most that uh, give some evidence. So having that in the background, we, uh, but there's also the study of uh, Arlene La Liberté, who uh, didn't mention that, but she did a wonderful uh, uh, study on a series of 30 suicides. And she did, she used the same, more or less the same instrument that we've been using in these studies. And she interviewing uh, a member of the family of uh, someone who had committed suicide found a very high 
uh, presence of uh, uh, of parental prob uh, of parental uh, behavior problems with 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 the, with the <laughs> person who committed suicide. W what is interesting, though, I if we compare. Uh, stories of, uh, uh, of uh, the family story of people who commit suicide in Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, uh, there's, there seems that me, for me, who've read uh, a lot, uh, who did a lot of studies on that, uh, is that in, uh, in non-Aboriginal, you, you see uh, two main factors that you also see in uh, case of uh, chronic depression in the studies of Brown and Harris in uh, England is that uh, you have a very strong score on rejection uh, by the mother especially and also a lack of affection uh, from the part of the parents. Uh, very harsh attitude, controlling attitude. Uh, what I think we found in uh, uh, what I found in my interviews, and I think it's also the color we see in Arlene's study, is that we find also so, some rejection, but uh, mainly in the form of abandonment, uh, because 40% of the kids uh, in some village where, where we work have been, have, have got some kinds of formal placement, so that's a very high rate of uh, abandonment at least. But the the, the dimension of lack of affection is less evident, we found. And there is also an idealization of the, uh, of the, of the peers. When we uh, interview them, the peers of society, of people who committed suicide, just kind of say, my, my parents were very nice, but you know, when they drunk, they, they were very bad. So it, it's not the same type of uh, family background that we see in non-Aboriginal family. But that would need uh, further studies. There were more at the preliminary stage. So what uh, my, my idea was that uh, we don't find, we don't seem to find uh, a, a lot of, of suicides in uh, Aboriginal people living in semi-urban or metropolitan areas, though there is very little also uh, strong evidence, that, but at least the little we know is that there, there is not high, uh, there's very few cases of suicide who are reported from uh, Montreal, Quebec, or little uh, communities in which we work like Latsuc, uh, Val d'Or, uh, Joliette, where uh, people tend to land when they get out of their community. And uh, so we wanted to compare anyway uh, if the family situation was different, uh, if the history of uh, uh, this time interviewing parents about how uh, they brought up their children, the challenge they had, uh, the problems they encountered. So we use the same uh, interview as we use for uh, uh, studies of suicide, but in uh, much more open. We ask the parents, uh, usually one parent, the, the mother in most cases, you know, what has been your experience with dealing with your, your children? So we didn't have, you know, did you beat them or did, we didn't have direct intrusive questions like we had when we ask, uh, let's say, a sibling of someone who has been, uh, who has committed suicide. It, it's uh, much easier to, to ask these kinds of questions. So we were, we had very open, but nevertheless, we got a lot of, uh, of material. Um, it was a, a, a very difficult to uh, complete these studies uh, because we had first a village where there had been a high number of suicides. Um, uh, no, uh, well, I'll come back to that uh, later. Uh, the main problem we had uh, in in the village is that we, we discovered after a while that we were perceived like working with the youth protection uh, system. So uh, uh, parents were very shy of uh, <laughs> uh, of uh, participating to the interview. So the uh, sample was biased toward having. Uh, uh, people who were working uh, in the health centers and the, with the snowball techniques, we had their network. So there were people with higher education, usually who had a job, and who felt comfortable uh, talking with uh, 
person from outside the community about their family life. So we really have a, a, a bias, uh, but a positively biased uh, population. Uh, in the small towns, it was, uh, it was quite difficult. The recruitment is about two-thirds of the work, if not more. Once you have recruited, it's very easy to do an interview and analyze it, but uh, the recruitment is very, very tough. So uh, uh, we had uh, communities in, uh, uh, in Latchuk, uh, Joliet, and, and Val d'Or. Uh, Latchuk and Joliet are more uh, near uh, Atikamekw, Algonquin communities, and Val d'Or is mostly uh, Algonquin uh, communities. And for the metropolitan area, we use uh, both Montreal and Quebec, but uh, we uh, kept out uh, Kanawaki and uh, Wendake because they, they have different situations. They are not really metropolitan. They are not really non-urban. Uh, and so we wanted mainly to see how the recently migrated families were doing. Uh, it was quite a challenge to uh, complete the sample, and that would be worth almost a publication in, uh, the, in Montreal. I don't know, I think we had all the nations of Quebec, and, and even more, because we had also uh, a Mi'kmaq uh, coming from uh, the Maritime province, and people, uh, maybe one or two coming from the West. So uh, we had one Inuit. Uh, it, it was a, a quite a variety, and these people don't uh, live in the same area. It's not like you go, well, they tend to go in Verdun. We've heard that in Verdun, that's where they were landing, but uh, no, we had people in Montreal in Verdun, in Rosemont, uh, Plateau Mont-Royal, in downtown, uh, so they were all scattered. And also we have to, you, we have to interview someone who has uh, a child who is at least five years old <laughs> and, and less than 18 years old. So that's also reduced substantially the, the possibility of having, uh, 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 building a sample. Yeah, five minutes, okay. So it was much, much, easier in Quebec because there we had Inu Montagnier. Um, I will go directly to the, the result. Um, so what we found, yeah, first uh, we, we interview people on, on the family of origin. We, we didn't have uh, data on, on all of them, but there is a, a very high rate of, um, when you say we say positive, is that there's been abuse of negligence in the family of origin. In the reserve, it was uh, from people we had data, it was almost universal, but uh, two thirds in the other family. Um, when we call the, the present family, it, it's not only uh, the day we make the interview, but we, we did a retrospective history uh, uh, of all the children that the parent had taken care of during her uh, marital life. And here we, we find uh, that uh, uh, it, it's still very high, despite the, the, the bias in the reserve, we, we have 83% of respondents, but we have a very low number that uh, had, uh, at one point or the other, important problems in their family, or had had important problems. Sometimes it was just uh, five years before in a first marriage, a first union, but not necessarily in the second union. But altogether, there were at least some people, some of the children who had been uh, uh, undergoing a uh, difficult uh, situation in that family. It, it was a bit uh, uh, less in the uh, small town, but again, the, the um, uh, sample is, uh, is uh, low. And in the metropolitan area, it is uh, somewhat better, uh, but not perfect. There, there's still a lot of improvement. What we found is that uh, sometimes the present situation was much better than during the first year of marriage or with the first child. So if we would only um, uh, qualify the present situation, we would have a much a more positive picture. So we have to study the family in the developmental stage. And what we found is that when uh, a woman has a child before 22, 23, uh, she had much, most of the difficulties are with the children she had before that. And after that, either she can take control of her life or she has a second union 
and things seems to get better. So uh, the, the family has really uh, has to be studied not horizontally at one point in time, but developmentally. And we've seen I've seen uh, at least one person who had been uh, you know he was. Uh, uh, 65 years old, uh, he, he was not a member of the sample, he, he had been a leader of the community, he was very mature, he didn't have deep trauma, though he had been in a residential school, but he said, my first child, I failed. Uh, I could not, uh, I didn't know how to handle a child, and he died because we could, didn't know how to deal with him, and after that it went well, so, uh, you know, acquire experience and, uh, and so on. Um, one, another important uh, conclusion is that uh, it's not only what's going on in the family, but also the ecology of the family. Uh, that, that's very important because sometimes we wouldn't see uh, that much difference in the way uh, parents were dealing in the reserve, outside of the reserve, but in the reserve, uh, they had a lot of problems with the school. Not because the school was bad, the school were very well administered, but when you are in the school where at least after the children have serious problems, all the efforts of the school are oriented toward these children. Whereas in, uh, in the small towns or cities like Montreal, when there is only 10% of children in classrooms who have problems, it's much easier for the school or the school teacher to deal with it. So it's a different environment. And also in the, um, uh, in the metropolitan area like Montreal and Quebec, it's much easier to keep uh, the children from outside influence because on the reserve, if you send your children on the, ch on the street after, after 10 years old, uh, they will get uh, into the drugs problem. So you have almost to keep them in the house to have a very, cl uh, very severe discipline if you want to uh, protect your children. You, you, cannot have, uh, uh, you, you cannot allow him to do uh, anything and that's what we found in the family we did, we did better. Uh, they, they, they had to have a tight control, which was not the case when they were living in the metropolitan area because the environment, though it has its problems, was safer than uh, under reserved. Um, so uh, I, I think some of the measures that, that could be made to uh, improve the situation and uh, decrease the, the risk of suicide, uh, if we could uh, find strategies to decrease the age uh, of uh, the mother when she has her first child, uh, and, and that would be through positive programs. Uh, people have some meaningful activities. They, they, it could improve the situation. The other is to increase the security and also is to have the local uh, uh, nations having governance of a child placement. That, that's a big issue. Uh, it's been partially solved in the Atikamek, but still a lot of work to do in the Algonquin community and other communities th throughout Quebec. So that will be the conclusion. <laughs>